Uh, good evening. If you want to turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, I'll be taking a look at a verse in there in just a second. It's been a while since I've been up here, so uh, I always appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of talk and kind of give some thoughts. Uh, it's been out of practice for a little while, but uh, we have so many people here that are, you know, have that uh, skill that I haven't had to volunteer in a long time, and so, <laughs> you know, it's a uh, good in a way, uh, but I guess bad for my own growth because it does help me <laughs> grow a little bit, but I only have five minutes, so I'm going to stop talking about myself. Uh, so this past, about a month ago, I, I was listening to a podcast that uh, kind of talked about this particular verse, and it actually had four different podcasts uh, that were about an hour long that talked about, you know, this idea, of, and I'll try to summarize it in four and a half minutes for you. Uh, but it was really good, and so I'll try to highlight just some of the, the main points. So here, let's go ahead and just read Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 2. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may, be, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And if you think about the, that first part of it where it's saying being conformed to this world, there's a lot of things that we are interacting with on a daily basis that can conform us or convince us of wanting to do certain things. Uh, we, you know, whether it be agreeing with social standards or agreeing with rules or laws, there's laws that you know, conform us to, to act appropriately. But there's media that we see all day long, or we have coworkers, we have friends, you know, that influence us on how we think about things. And, and sometimes even our family might make us think about certain things in a, in a particular way. And the Bible verse here is asking us to not conform to this world. And so it's sometimes difficult for us to, you know, really defend ourselves against those things, especially if they're going in a direction that the Bible wouldn't want us to. And so, well, what do we do? What do we do when, when we kind of run into those things? How do we defend ourselves? Well, the verse here kind of tells us. It says we must be transformed. And if you think of that word, um, the, the actual podcast kind of used or defined it as metamorphosis. And if you know anything about biology or science or anything like that, you'd probably... Uh, studied that uh, when you were in science class, metamorphosis means to change. And one of the best analogies that I'm sure you've probably heard of in many sermons is the analogy of the, the caterpillar and the butterfly. Uh, we actually have a tomato plant at our house that uh, Alana and I planted a long time ago, and it actually had one of those green, large caterpillars on it that was eating it all the time. And we thought when we first saw it, it was a, one of, we was like, oh, maybe that's one of the monarch butterflies. But Alana Googled it, and lo and behold, it was not. It actually is a moth that comes from that particular type of caterpillar. But if you didn't know anything about it, you would never think that this caterpillar could actually turn into this moth or to this butterfly if you never studied science or anything. It just doesn't look because it's a completely different organism, it's a completely different animal. And so in us, if you think about what we need to do, we need to transform, we need to change, we need to be completely different than what is around us and, and what we're thinking about. And so it also kind of goes on, oh, actually there was a, a joke that that podcast kind of did around this caterpillar joke. He says that two caterpillars were walking along the sidewalk and a butterfly flies by and one caterpillar looked at the other and was like, you'll never get me one of those things. <laughs> but God did, right? He made it to where they could, that they did change, that they transformed. Uh, but how do, we, how do we transform? And the verse kind of goes on, it kind of tells us, it says, by the renewing of your mind. And everything, if you think about it, if you think about it, starts with your mind. What are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? What are we talking about? Everything that we think about in our minds translates into actions that we're doing, translates into thoughts, into, uh, you, you know, Actions, I guess, I've already said that, but it, it changes the way that we do things, and it, it forms us outside, but it forms us also inwardly. And so what are we uh, doing within our minds? We have to, to think about things, and I think the only way that you know, we're going to be able to transform or change the way that we're doing things is to, number one, if we have things around us that are making us go in the wrong direction, change those things. And if we can't change those things, change the way that we are we are defining those things or change the way that we look at those things that are kind of around us. The only way that I can think about doing, the only way I can think of doing that 
by changing the way that we see things that happen to us is by having God's word in our lives. Because as we read those things, as we read his verses, we begin to recognize the important things in our lives. We begin to, to see, well, you know, maybe I don't have a lot of money or maybe, you know, I have too much money and I need to figure out how to best manage that. How best to take the opportunities I have to, to go to church and to be around other Christians and how do I manage my coworkers and, and different things like that or even my friends? How do I manage how they're thinking about things? And I think the Bible references every possible scenario that we can think of that we, that we can you know, experience in our lives on how to deal with those things. But the only way that we're going to know how to deal with those things is if we read it, if we understand it, if we take the time to, to look at it. Sometimes that can be, tar that can be hard to you know, look at a big, thick book of the Bible and say, man, I've got to read that whole thing. It can be overwhelming. But don't think about the goal, but just think about the, the process of getting to that goal. Baby steps, you know, read, you know, get the Bible out and put it on the, in the table so that you see it every day. Next thing you know, you'll, you'll see it, that, you'll get used to that, and then maybe one day you'll open it. Maybe read one verse. It's, it's the baby steps to get to that final goal of wanting to read the entire Bible. And, and those actions, that mindset will be with you throughout the day. And it'll help you to redefine what it is that you're looking at and how you're reacting to those things. You know, the caterpillar didn't change on its own. God made it to change. And I think he's made us in that same way to where we're capable of changing, but we have to want to have that change. It all begins with God being in our hearts, being in our minds, being in our lives, and that starts with baptism. So if anybody here this evening has not had a chance to be baptized, we have everything ready. It's all back there ready to do. Or if you've already been baptized and you're just struggling with something and you need uh, the prayers of the congregation here, let us know how we can help as we stand and sing.